I've never been a huge believer in fate or destiny, that people's lives follow a predetermined path that they're forced to go down. I've never really subscribed to that belief until recently. I think there are people out there that are just born to be losers. Just like a joke of a person that follows this trajectory of the most pathetic path possible. I'm talking specifically about one man that I've made multiple videos on now named Billy Mitchell. The self-proclaimed video game player of the century. A lame-ass title that he pretty much gave himself because he had some high scores in some old video games. Most notably his King of Kong score, the high score in Donkey Kong, which he cheated for. I know that's a, a dangerous word to be talking about in the same sentence as Billy because he is so litigious. He sues everyone who accuses him of cheating or even makes fun of him in relation to cheating. He even tried to sue Cartoon Network because his feelings got hurt when there was a villain in the regular show that bears a resemblance to him who blows up when he loses his high score in a video game. And he got so offended, this sensitive nematode got so fucking upset about it that he tried suing Cartoon Network and subsequently got laughed out of court for it. So not only is he so pitiful that he fakes his video game high scores, but he also is an insufferable douchebag who legally comes after anyone that makes jokes about him or talks about him in a bad light. And he fails to realize that the person that does the most damage to his reputation is himself for these absolute childish tantrums that he throws. He is a known cheater. There are mountains upon mountains of evidence against him. There is more evidence to confirm Billy Mitchell has cheated than there is evidence to confirm the sun is hot. He is a fucking cheater. But... Even if you want to disregard all of the evidence that currently exists, Carl Jobs recently made an amazing breakdown of new evidence that just surfaced that 100% confirms that he has cheated his scores. The, the video is amazing. Carl Jobs, I recently made a video on about Billy Mitchell because he is being sued by Billy not once but twice. One of them because he used a meme that insinuated Billy is a cheater. It's, it's beyond comical at this point, but now all of that seems like it's going to be completely washed. You can just wipe your ass with a lawsuit at this point with the new evidence that surfaced that Carl Jobs highlights here. And I'd like to go over the whole situation here with you and show you some highlights from it. I'm also going to put a link to Carl's video in the description so you can check it out in its entirety. Overall, I'm just super excited about this and extremely happy to see where it goes from here because this should 100% put the absolute kibosh on all of his lawsuits since the truth is now known. No matter, like, if, if you disregard all of the other evidence, this one is completely irrefutable, I think, and uh, that's great. <laughs> Billy Mitchell, man, he just can't stop collecting these L's. Uh, just to quickly bring everyone up to speed here, Billy Mitchell, video game player of the century, also punching bag for the regular show, where he even tried to sue them for making fun of him in an episode, has come after many people, legally, for all kinds of defamation cases. And the core of it boils down to people accusing him of being a cheater. And I'm going to go a step further. They're not just accusing him like, you know, allegations of cheating. They have caught him being a cheater. But he has always maintained his innocence. And that's where it all stems from. He still claims he's never cheated, and anyone that makes fun of him or says otherwise gets a nice fat lawsuit from Billy Mitchell. Cooked up in the deepest pits of his basement, I guess. I'm pretty sure he writes them himself, and he takes it as far as it can go. Have you been sued? Billy Mitchell has still not sued me, and I have made fun of him fucking... 50 times by now I don't know why I actually feel left out I, I feel like I'm not part of the cool kids lunch table here because Billy Mitchell won't sue me he is suing Carl because Carl used a meme of Billy that made fun of him and insinuated he was a cheater Carl used a meme I point blank called this absolutely disheveled drunk looking man a cheater a million times point blank and he won't come after me asshole I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna sue him for refusing to sue me. 
How is it possible that he performed them at a live event in front of hundreds of people if he faked it and actually played on an emulator? The videotapes must be fake or are not his actual gameplay or should just be ignored because he has real people that mm. say he really did it and they saw it happen Watertight so it argument. must be legit. As Billy said in his lawsuit, if everyone is lying, it must be a conspiracy akin to that of the Kennedy assassination. But <laughs> wait, here's the... Wait, what? Wait. Pardon? What was that? Thus, Twin Galaxies' case essentially rests on a conspiracy nearly as broad and untenable as the Kennedy assassination. I, like I said, I'm pretty sure he writes these himself. What self-respecting lawyer is going to sit down and put that in text? Who? Who would do that? But I'm surprised he doesn't go into, like, the Zapruder film. What they faked here is akin to the Zapruder film. And in fact, the moon landing, too, while we're at it. The videotapes were the only tangible evidence these scores ever happened. So that's all anyone had to go off. Aside from the tapes, it was just people saying that it happened, which really doesn't cut it. There was no footage Obviously, of Billy actually playing. There was nothing to indicate that he was even there or... I'm sorry to keep pausing so frequently. It's just such a wacky case. He still believes that he shouldn't be accused of being a cheater because even if those tapes are faked or whatever, people saw him do it live and have said, verbally said, he did it. That's fucking useless. I can get people together and say that I grew five inches. But then if you see me on camera and I'm five, six, I can't just be like, no, that, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. That's as untenable as the Kennedy assassination. This is all fabricated. It's fraudulent. Look at all these people that said that I grew five inches. It's fucking worthless. It's a fucking worthless statement. And I don't know if Billy's too stupid to realize that or if he truly does believe it. Because why would anyone take you at your word? I could say I got the high score on Donkey Kong. I got a 15 billion. And then I could have everyone in chat say, yeah, Charlie got a 15 billion. Should Twin Galaxies put that on their website and make me the world record holder? I don't have any video evidence of it, but I have a ton of people that said I did it. The answer should be a resounding no. It's, it's so silly. It's so silly. ...that he played at all. That is, until now. For the first time in 15 years, photos of Billy Mitchell at one of these events where he claims to have achieved one of his world records have surfaced. <laughs> and I'm not going to beat this around cool. the bush. These photos absolutely destroy Billy's case. He is done. There is no more really? doubt Billy will lose his lawsuit. These photos... This is, this is already so fucking good. So these photos destroy the lawsuit. Why? The, the referee who looks really sad to be there? Did he, did he let the cat out of the bag? Man, that tie is mean though. Look at Billy Mitchell's tie. Holy shit. Captain America over here. These photos do more damage than anything that has come before them, and I'm not exaggerating. Even if you disregard all of the videotape evidence, Billy's world records would still be disqualified and he would still be banned for lying just because of these photos. So how is that even possible? Let's find out. I wow. really hope you enjoy. Man, this would be worse than if his sex tape leaked, now, I legends, guess. Now, Legends, I am super excited because the second is a 1.05 million point score Billy achieved in 2007, which is known as the Mortgage Brokers score. This is because he supposedly achieved it at a mortgage broker's convention. The videotapes for both of these what? scores show footage that isn't that. legitimate. This is a fact, and it's why he was banned. But aside from... Oh, let me read that one more time. It's been a while since I've seen this. It's, it is inarguable that he was cheating, by the way. It's not allegations. It is legitimately inarguable. I can't remember. Did, I, did we go over the entire evidence package on stream at some point? Or am I having a fake memory right now? Maybe we did it on the podcast. Because I do remember going through at least a good chunk of it. Quite a while back. Number three is just a single sentence. During the event, Billy played in a very large convention room and interacted with and performed in front of thousands of people, myself included. And? <laughs> it's... Oh, 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 this is all one person statement. Oh, I thought this was five or six different statements from different people. I was like, what the fuck? There's, there's nothing more there. This is one person's account. Okay. This is part of the, the whole thing from her statement. I was like, Jesus, come on. I don't know if I feel like going through the whole thing. But I guess a written testimonial claiming that they saw it. That's all you need. Surely there's no such thing as lying. 
and many of the members I worked with are still active members now. All this information is very available, very public, and quite memorable. Sheila, why are you writing that with so much attitude? You're not the one on trial for cheating or anything. That was very, that was a very aggressive sign-off. This leaves three witnesses that say they directly saw him get the world record. The first is from a guy called Richard Malian. He says he watched Billy's score reach beyond 1 million points and that he saw him achieve his targeted score. Richard is actually a childhood friend of Billy's. In fact, he appeared opposite <laughs> Billy in the school yearbook. Uh -oh. But let's not hold that against him. While it is common for friends the to lie for huh? each other, let's not assume that's what happened. He has a nice suit and he has a nice watch. Very no trustworthy. No one who dresses this well could lie. So I'm going to put that into the yes column. <laughs> For the no column, <laughs> there isn't much I found out about Richard that really concerns me, except for this super tiny detail of him pleading guilty to conspiracy, securities fraud, money laundering, and criminal contempt in 19... Could have happened to anyone, and in fact, I'm going to tell you what happened. He was set up by Twin Galaxies. They knew there was a connection between the Duck and Billy Mitchell, the King of Kong, and they tried to attack everyone in Billy's circle. Complete misunderstanding... Very fabricated, not real. 1996, after an FBI sting I wouldn't operation. Hold against him. I mean, it's probably nothing, but it would be remiss of me if I didn't include it. Maybe <laughs> this is being too judgmental, but I'm gonna go ahead and add to the fact that he was charged again with fraud in 2019 <laughs> by the SEC and had to pay back $750,000. Once again, Carl, this was a setup. My my man, this this was Twin Galaxies trying to take out the witnesses. You know, no different than Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, where Scott had to go through all the ex-boyfriends and shit. This is Twin Galaxies going through all of the witnesses right now. It, this, you can't hold it against Richard here. He did nothing wrong. In 2021, Richard was unfortunately arrested for conspiracy <laughs> to commit fraud. Look, he has just not been lucky when it comes to fraud. He keeps getting caught. I, for one... This picture here... Now I know it was a frame job, and I know it's all false, because they're doing my man Richard so dirty with this mugshot here. Like, it looks like he's fucking skydiving, like all the skin's being pushed towards the back of his skull here. It's like he's fucking melting. Where does the, the neck start and the chin end? Oh, man. Is he laying down and they took this picture? What is going on here? keeps getting caught. I, for one, do not hold this against him. When I look at this table, I see three to three. It's pretty That's easy. tough. That's Personally, a toss-up. I'm leaning towards trusting the guy, but you let me know in the comments what you think. Okay, so Billy's first witness is a bit sketch. Who's number two? Billy's second witness that says he saw him oh, get Oh, God, it it's Todd, Todd Rogers. Rogers. <laughs> oh, boy, this is not going well. Okay, hit me with number three. Surely we're going to get a winner. Hey, he's probably not going to touch on Todd Rogers. Todd Rogers is another notorious cheater of these old game high scores. He has a whole saga of his own. I, I don't even think I could do it justice trying to summarize it here. But that is so poetic that one of the other witnesses is fucking Todd Rogers. That's amazing. What a This is like a team of Avengers that he has for witnesses. The third witness that says they saw Billy get the score is Kim Mahoney, who is also Todd Rogers' girlfriend. I'm going to be completely honest here. Coincidence. I'm getting the impression that Billy's witnesses may not be entirely trustworthy. There's Billy and Todd posing with a couple of people. There's a camera that was recording Billy play, even though that footage doesn't seem to exist for some reason. They left the lens on. Posing lens again cap. with the thumbs up. Maybe this is just after Billy got the world record. I have to admit, everything here looks pretty legit. And oh my god, what is that? <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm not knowledgeable enough. What is it? Is it a copyright 2023 on there? That joystick is not an original Donkey Kong joystick. <laughs> this arcade machine does not have original unmodified Donkey Kong arcade hardware. Oh, this jeepers. It's an original Donkey Kong stick. It's got a big black ball and a short column. The stick oh, on wow. Billy's arcade is a tall stick with a smaller ball. And it's obviously red. So the stick has been changed to something else. Easily explainable. This machine was considered so legit that they had to change out the stick. Otherwise, because people were fighting each other to compete for high scores on it because it was so fucking real. 
So the stick just got worn out from over usage, but the machine, that's the only thing that's been changed that that much I'm sure of. Or, you know what, that's a good point. This could have been a special edition cabinet that was sent to Billy Mitchell by Nintendo themselves. They were so happy that the King of Kong wanted to use an arcade cabinet that they made that they gave him a special red stick. You know, for the red, white, and blue, because he's such a patriot, obviously. Easily explainable. On top of that, it appears to be an eight-way stick. Now, the original Donkey Kong stick is four-way, which means it can only go up, down, left, and right. The game can be played. If you want to steer barrels while on a ladder, you have to stop and hold left or right, because you can't go up and to the side at the same time. But with an eight-way stick, you can continue to climb ladders while steering barrels by using the diagonals. With an eight-way stick, That's you can do things you can't do on an original arcade, which is... I'm actually just even shocked that he played the game. I thought this was going to prove that Billy Mitchell's never even touched Donkey Kong in his life. So honestly, at this point, I have a little more respect for Billy knowing that he just used a cheating device in order to have a better score, like to play better. I thought for sure it was going to come out that he just doesn't even know what Donkey Kong is. He's never touched the fucking thing in his life. Which is why they are banned. So not only is the stick not original, which was totally banned, it looks like an eight-way stick, which is extra banned. His entire lawsuit against Twin Galaxies is based on the premise that he played on unmodified original arcade hardware, which is yep. categorically not true. True, very wrong. Not only from the videotapes, but now from the photos as well. And his lawsuit is full of lies where Billy claims the hardware was unmodified. Everyone just got caught out, big Oof. time. And it gets... How... How did they even let this happen? Surely they would have recognized the stick, right? This man dedicated his entire life to Donkey Kong and his high score. He did one thing that isn't even that cool, getting a high score in Donkey Kong, and he let it define his entire fucking life for the net for the last 22 years, 24 years. And he wouldn't recognize that the stick isn't original? Surely he would have done everything in his power to keep these photos buried. Fucking burn the photos, for God's sakes. He would have had to know that people would be able to easily see that it's not an original stick. He didn't release it. I, I get he wasn't the one that released it. What I'm saying is, I'm sure he would have done everything in his power to stop it from ever coming out. Like, legitimately burn these photos. But maybe that was just beyond his control at this point? Like, I don't, who released it? Well, maybe Carl will mention it here in a moment. I'm just shocked he wouldn't go immediately to the event or- He knew the photos were being taken. He was literally giving thumbs up with the uh, Todd Rogers in front of the cabinet. So he knew there were photos. And he would have known that people would have recognized that as a not legitimate, unmodified stick. So why would even A, let photos be taken, and B, not go to the event and like fucking scrub those archives? You may be wondering why Billy would lie about something that can so obviously be disproven. That's what I was and just talking about. And the answer about. is that Billy didn't know these photos existed. In what? fact, the entire Donkey Kong community didn't know these photos existed. They were only made public recently, and not by Billy Mitchell. These photos were never made public, and they were only retrieved now by directly contacting the organizers of the convention. That blows my mind. He literally gave a thumbs up multiple times with Todd Rogers in front of that machine. Who was he giving the thumbs up for? He knew pictures were being taken. What did he think happened to the... What? what? <laughs> Wait, what? This is a cool angle of Billy, though, I will say. His hair looks even more like a Lego block in this angle. But I still just can't believe that he wouldn't remember photos being taken because he posed multiple times for him. I'm also surprised that it took this long for someone to contact the event staff from the, uh, the, the mortgage thing. I feel like a lot of people would have thought to do that a long time ago, but maybe just now they finally found the photos. I cannot wait until this goes to trial, and wow. you best believe that when it <laughs> does, I'm going to cover it. I'm excited, and I think you should be too. Because I am. Because this is going to be a lot of fun. As always, thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. This is also great news for Carl. This is a big Carl W as well, because he's he is currently getting sued by this goofball, this goober. And as everyone knows, the number one defense against defamation, which is what Billy Mitchell is coming after him for, is the absolute truth. 
And now, it seems, it has been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt, he cheated. Thus, the case against Carl is fucking kaput. And it really just goes to show you, sometimes the simplest means and like the simplest explanations are the most effective. Hey, so you got this at a, a mortgage convention what year? And, and, and where was it? Why don't I just give them a call? Maybe they have photos. Hey, you guys have any photos? Oh, we do. Yeah, you want them? Yes, please. Bang. And now it's all, now it's all over for Billy Mitchell's case. Aren't frivolous lawsuits illegal? Yeah, but it feels like a lot of people get away with doing that. He's made like an entire fucking career off of frivolous lawsuits. Has he actually won any lawsuits? My man, I don't think he's even had one of his lawsuits make it to a trial. They get thrown out so quick. But it's still expensive for the people he sues. It's still a headache. It's such an absurd thing to ruin your life over. All right, let's 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 not get carried away. Billy Mitchell just didn't ruin his life over this. He's not going to go to jail. On, he's just, he's, he just has a legacy of being a fucking joke of a person and an insufferable asshole for all the frivolous lawsuits he tosses at people that make fun of him or point out that he's cheated. He hasn't ruined his life. The man has a fucking hot sauce deal, for God's sakes. None of which I think he earned, by the way. He has one accolade, and it's high scores at Donkey Kong that he fucking cheated. So in fact, he got, he got dealt a really lucky hand. He got one thing that he's never let go, and he's somehow found success from it. Might want to tone it back before he sues you. He can't anymore. He, he literally can't. Because the truth is now abundantly clear. Even if you set aside all of the inarguable evidence of him cheating, now these pictures that have come out confirm it even more beyond a shadow of a doubt. He legitimately can no longer sue anymore. Why do these confirm he's cheating? Oh, if you weren't here, I'll give you the quick explanation. So the whole claim is that he got the high scores on an unmodified original hardware. However, now that these pictures are out, you can see it's not. So the original hardware did not have this stick. It had a small black stick. So it had a black ball on top and the stick. Not this. So immediately that disqualifies all of his records because it is not unmodified hardware. He's lied about it. It is clearly modified. Oh yeah, and it's an eight-way stick apparently, which is another banned device because it gives you uh, an advantage. You're able to cheat the game a bit more by being able to go in the other four angles here diagonally. So this stick right here just throws out everything he's ever claimed. It's just a stick cover. Well, it wouldn't matter. Let's, you know what? Let's play ball with you. Let's assume that is a stick cover and the original stick is still under there. That is A, still not allowed, and B, impossible, because here's what the original stick looks like. It's a tiny little goofy, like almost door handle, doorknob. Not that long stretched one. So it can't even just be a cover. It is a completely different stick. Chode vs. Grower. Yeah, I guess kinda. The OG is more chody. Not only that, I bet there was an emulator built into the arcade box. We're not- We're setting aside all of the massive amounts of evidence talking about it being on emulator, not original hardware. We're setting all that aside and just going by what we can physically see from the photos of the event, where it is clearly modified. We don't, you don't even need to touch all of the deep analysis, which also confirm that it's illegitimate. You can just look at the photos from the event and still get the correct answer that it's fake. I'm curious to see how he decides to fight this. You know he'll not, he will not admit it. So, I'll make a prediction, and right now I'm on fire with my predictions. I think the way Billy Mitchell tackles this is the exact way that any fucking geriatric person would. It's all fake Photoshop AI fabricated. He's going to claim that these photos are fabricated, they're AI generated or AI enhanced, something like that. The photos are fake. They've done something with the knob. It's, you know, this was an original knob, but they've edited it all out. He's going to harp on it being Photoshopped and doctored. 100%. Have you ever stopped to think how embarrassing it is being born? The first thing a human being does when it's birthed is cry, and crying is cringe. 
So we literally enter this world as a little cringe specimen, and it's up to us to spend the rest of our lives trying to transcend the first cringe and be something more. But what happens when you spend your entire lives as nothing but a clown? Someone who just embarrasses themselves at every step of their journey. Well, then you end up like Billy Mitchell. I'm just describing Billy Mitchell. Billy Mitchell is the self-proclaimed video game player of the century. He was the former world record holder for Donkey Kong, and he has spent the better part of the last four or five years just ruining his own reputation by frivolously suing everyone that even so much as makes fun of him or makes a light joke about him. And the reason for this lashing out is because it was revealed through tons and tons and tons of evidence that Billy Mitchell most likely cheated for his records is most likely a fraud, allegedly. So since that doomsday, Billy's just been an insufferable asshole who sues everyone who makes a joke about it or talks about it, and he tries to scare people with massive lawsuits. It's just a big piece of shit. So he's already sued a YouTuber whom I'm a big fan of. His name's Carl. I'm sure a lot of you have watched his content before. He's suing Carl, and it's a very expensive lawsuit so far. It's been like $180,000, according to Carl. But he wasn't done there. Just two weeks ago, Billy Mitchell came back out of the shadows to sue Carl again. Even though the previous lawsuit is still ongoing, he is suing Carl, or he is suing Carl again, but this time for an even more outrageous reason that I'm not going to spoil right now. I'll let Carl go ahead and give you the surprise, because what a special treat it is. This is one of the most baffling reasons for a lawsuit I think I've probably ever heard in general. Now, as I understand it, the second lawsuit hasn't been fully filed yet. Right now, it is still in the letter of intent stage where they are intending to sue Carl and have sent him the documents to indicate such, but it looks like it is going to be sent uh, in the coming days. In response to this, Carl made another video going over just how silly it all is, but also how expensive everything is, and he set up a GoFundMe because he's right now getting dual hand jobs here from Billy Mitchell with the double lawsuit coming in. So he does have a GoFundMe, which I'm going to link below. Please Feel free to support him if you'd like to help Carl against an absolutely ruthless villain here. I think Billy Mitchell is unhinged and this kind of behavior is completely unacceptable and complete fucking bullshit. And hopefully it results in Billy Mitchell himself getting countersued. Good news is he currently is in another lawsuit with a company called Twin Galaxies and it's looking like he will most likely lose that. So there's some good news there and I have full confidence that Carl will also be able to beat Billy Mitchell because Billy has a history of these awful fucking lawsuits that just don't work because they're so fucking dumb. Now I'd like to share some of Carl's video with you and go into even more detail on Billy Mitchell. So I want to talk about this. I don't know how many of you saw this today. So Carl is again being sued by Billy Mitchell. Billy Mitchell, as I'll bring you up to speed on the lore, uh, disgraced best gamer of all time. What did he call himself? The gamer of the century? Can't quite recall. Donkey Kong world record holder, outed as a fraud, in denial for the rest of his life, allegedly a fraud. Otherwise, I'm going to get sued for saying that. And he just goes on like a legal rampage to try and scare people into silence. So he throws his meat around to get people on edge so they don't talk about him or they remove anything that's, you know, hypercritical of him. Carl has once again found himself in the crosshairs of old Billy Mitchell here. So he's now posted this video talking about it. And this one is a little scarier than the last one. Billy Mitchell's got the fangs out. So he's coming out locked and loaded. And it's just a really fucking sad situation that Billy Mitchell continues to do this. He's what they call a serial sewer. He just files all kinds of these frivolous lawsuits knowing full well they won't make it to court. But is still expensive on the people he files them against most of the time. It's a fucking disgrace. And he's absolutely shit at games. As many of you know, last year I was officially sued by yep. Billy Mitchell. In September of 2021, Mitchell filed a $450,000 lawsuit against me over my video titled The Biggest Con Men in Video Game History. Strike Great Again. video too. In that video... Not yeah, so if you're not familiar with Billy Mitchell, but you've seen the regular show, Billy Mitchell was so upset that they used his image in... Here, I'll bring it up, actually. I don't even know why I'm going to try and paint it with words when I can just look it up. They used this as, like, an antagonist when it was about, like, a high score episode. Billy Mitchell got pissed. He got so fucking mad. And this is honestly the best Billy Mitchell's ever looked. I actually think Regular Show did him a great service 
Usually he's dressed like he's running for student class president. But here, they made him look they made him look cool. I can't remember if he sued them, though. Oh, no, he did. He did and lost. Which sounds par for the course in the life of Billy Mitchell. Judge declares Mitchell is not a giant floating head. <laughs> cool ruling. Though, I do understand why Billy might be a little upset because they portrayed him as like this ferociously unhinged maniac. Which he is. So that's just a big old get fucked, Billy. Unlucky. I actually haven't read the quotes from the ruling. The television character does not match the plaintiff in appearance. GBF, character in the show, appears as a non-human creature, a giant floating head with no body from outer space, while plaintiff is a human being. And when GBF loses his title, the character literally explodes, unlike plaintiff. One could argue Billy Mitchell also explodes, but it's far more embarrassing. His explosions just usually end up with shittily written lawsuits and as well as just verbal tantrums and salt. Billy Mitchell's compulsive need to threaten and sue people that talk about him has reached all-time highs. And you will not that believe John what he has Wick? recently done to try to silence me. Yeah. But before that, my legal defense has cost $180,000. Yep. Yes, you heard correctly, $180,000. That's why it's so disgraceful when someone takes this absolute garbage route. There's a lot of people that have done this online. You guys might remember BitBoy Crypto tried something similar against Atozi, where Atozi called him out on some of the shit he was talking about, and BitBoy Crypto threatened this big lawsuit, you know, defamation, I can't sleep, I can't eat because he called me a dirtbag, that kind of shit. It is always such a financial burden to fight that shit, even though it doesn't win the case. The whole point is to bleed you of money. It's, it's so fucked up. Does it not cost Billy Mitchell money to file these? I don't know. I'm not well versed enough to know for sure. A lot of times the frivolous lawsuits, in order to file them, it's not super expensive or anything. You can do it relatively cheap. At least compared to fighting it. Because once you file it, the onus is really on the person you're going after to defend themselves against you. So that's where a lot of the money comes from. So yes, it does cost something for them to do it. But it doesn't cost nearly as much for them to file it as it does to fight it. Because you see, Billy Mitchell isn't satisfied just suing me once. Oh no, he is going to sue me Double again. dipping. In April of this fist. year, I released a video called Disgraced Gamer Billy Mitchell Accused of Extortion, <laughs> where I factually and objectively reported on accusations made against Mitchell by the current Donkey Kong World record holder, Robbie Lakeman. Then that's where you made a mistake, Carl. I gotta tell you, when it comes to Billy Mitchell, there's no such things as facts, only feelings. And you, you poke the sleeping bear. Billy was content with just one frivolous lawsuit, but now he's, he's going in full throttle. As in my humble opinion, he has absolutely no case, and this is just an attempt to scare me, but it still gets even worse. Yeah, it's an expensive scare tactic, though. And I have to say, I love the nuts on Carl. So, usually in these things, they make a request, take down the video or else. A lot of times, because of how expensive this is and how scary the big numbers are, people fold, take it down. Hope that's the end of it. Carl sticks to his guns, and I always appreciate that. I always think that's great. Just say, okay, you want to dance? Mama's putting on the dancing shoes then. Let's hit the tango. And then duke it out from there. Because going forward, while it's cheaper to file it than it is to fight it, it is still going to cost Billy Mitchell money should this continue. He's going to lose money as well. And it's not like he's like super wealthy. He does have a decent chunk of change to his name from what I understand. But it's not like he's made out of money. He can't fight this thing forever. In May of this year, I released a video called I Cheated in a Speed Run and I Need to Come Clean, which was a parody video where I jokingly made fun of myself for submitting a few cheated scores to a gaming magazine over 20 years ago when I was a kid. Anyone who's watched that video might be wondering what this has to do with Billy Mitchell. It was As brought the up video in the lawsuit. Wasn't about him, nor did I even talk about him. While it is true that I didn't mention or talk about Billy Mitchell, I did show this clip. You're familiar with Billy Mitchell, world team champion? He could probably do it. So I gotta find a way to harness his power. And I think I found a way. That's right, we're gonna cheat. 
This is a meme that was made back in 2020, <laughs> which has over 4 million views Fire on YouTube meme. and millions of views on Twitter. That's right. In the entire video, I literally did not mention Billy Mitchell he at all. He should sue Angry Video him. Game Nerd. I simply randomly threw in this meme of someone else talking as a joke, and Billy Mitchell wants to sue me for this. I didn't remember this. Peter Dinklage pays, plays a Billy Mitchell stand-in who has always bested Adam Sandler's character when they were kids. It's revealed the reason he was so good was because he cheated. Fucking hype. I'm assuming Billy Mitchell tried a lawsuit there. He must have consented to that then. Maybe that was too big of an opportunity for him to get upset about. They had the creator of Pac-Man get eaten by Pac-Man in the movie. Hey, that's a little different though. Billy Mitchell is always adamant that he's never cheated. It's all legit. He is... What, what does he call himself? Is it the gamer of the century? Like, he calls himself fucking gamer of the century or something. Oh, video game player of the century. Not even... Jesus, gamer of the century would have been better. Why video game player? You just call yourself gamer and you get one word for the price of three. Mm -hmm. Billy Mitchell is guilty of fraudulently hoodwinking so as to obtain unfair advantage when competing in video games. Yeah, that is what the meme is uh, saying. I don't know how you really sue for the meme though. Especially when Carl didn't even make the meme. He should go after the meme maker. In fact, he should just go after anyone that says anything about him on Twitter or Reddit. Like, just really put your tentacles all the way out there. Section 10A of the Defamation Including Act at you? the time of your- I'm actually shocked Billy Mitchell hasn't come after me yet. Not only have I made fun of this man extensively for years now, talked about him on the podcast quite a bit, I keep up with Billy Mitchell and the enjoyable tragedy that is his public reputation and how he just wipes his ass with it constantly. I'm, I'm super finger on the pulse when it comes to Billy Mitchell. I am shocked he hasn't tried. I, he, I, I suppose he's welcome to if he wants. I would absolutely fight that shit tooth and nail. I would have, I'd request that it be live streamed as well so that way there's fucking content flowing from it. I think it'd be great. Billy Mitchell strikes me as the type of guy that would represent himself in court too. Even though none of his lawsuits have ever made it that far because they're such dog shit. I feel like if they did, he would represent himself. It would be just a content factory. Oh my lord. Billy Mitchell is a joke. He has become a parody of himself. <laughs> True. This letter is nothing short of hilarious. <laughs> not defamatory. And I would otherwise Truth. be laughing if not for the fact that this is a real letter written by a real lawyer that my lawyers really had to respond to. So not only does he want to sue me over a meme that someone else made, but he wants to sue me over a meme that someone else made that's true. And what's ironic is that Huge. there are hundreds of comments underneath the YouTube video of this clip of people making fun of Billy, joking, saying that he's going to sue them for posting it. And then he actually- Yeah, how can you- As Billy Mitchell, they even quoted the YouTube comments in the lawsuit. So how can you as Billy Mitchell see these comments, them laughing at you knowing you're going to sue him and then still do it? You make yourself an even bigger joke. It is actually just impressive. Billy Mitchell is like a human snowball, like just tumbling down a mountain, getting bigger and bigger and bigger as more and more failures compound, and then eventually just having this comedic explosion at the bottom that everyone points and laughs at. What, an, what a remarkable legacy. So I have set up a GoFundMe Probably. to help with my fight against Billy Mitchell, and any help would be immensely appreciated. Absolutely. This GoFundMe is set to cover the rest of my existing lawsuit, plus the new lawsuit that Billy Mitchell says he will be filing, plus having to deal with all of the other bullshit threats that come my way. This is in Australian dollars, so it's not as large as it seems, but it's still a very significant amount of money that it's going it's to take to defeat USD? Mitchell. There is light at the end of the tunnel, though. In Australian court, generally the loser has to pay a lot of the legal fees of the winning party so how's the gofundme going i hope it's going well i haven't checked fuck yeah hey that's a good day one right there i'll be donating to it i i really think when carl wins i i don't see a world where billy somehow squeaks out a dub here i think when carl wins carl needs to counter sue and I will do whatever it takes to make that possible. I want to put Billy Mitchell against the ropes. I want Carl and Billy to duke it out in court. And I just want to be there with the popcorn to spectate. Because you, you can counter sue for frivolous lawsuits. Knowingly filing bogus lawsuits isn't necessarily allowed. 
you can come back against that for sure. So I really think once this is all settled, the dust settles, I think a countersuit is the right play. The next 12 months will not be good for Billy Mitchell. He has his trial against Twin Galaxies coming up, and in my opinion, oh, yeah. in the opinion of anyone who knows the details of Mitchell's cheating, he has absolutely no chance of winning. As I completely fucking forgot. Billy Mitchell is actually being sued right now. So in the middle of him getting sued, he is still sending out lawsuits. This man is unstoppable. I forgot Twin Galaxies is suing him. But as soon as he loses one of these lawsuits, which is inevitable, he will be absolutely destroyed and everything will come crumbling down. So this has been an update to what I've been dealing with. So one thing Carl says that I think is a little wrong is everything coming crum everything crumbling down for Billy Mitchell. That makes it sound like Billy Mitchell has like a prospering career. He doesn't. Billy Mitchell is like the definition of washed up has been. Everything will come crumbling down should all of these lawsuits not go in his favor, which I highly doubt they will. But it's not like he's in a good spot right now in general. People talk about him as the butt of jokes. He's not necessarily a celebrity. He's not looked at in, as a video game icon or champion or anything. He doesn't have like a big empire. He's just a big asshole who has ruined his own legacy and refuses to accept any level of responsibility. No one gives a fuck about Billy Mitchell aside from laughing at him for every frivolous lawsuit. You might get sued. I'm not saying anything defamatory. I'm just saying the truth of where he's at right now. He may or may not have cheated. There's a lot of evidence to suggest he did, but it's all alleged, of course. I'm just talking about him being a joke of a person. That's not defamatory. I find you sad. That's not defamatory. Watching you makes me laugh and feel sadness. Again, if you have the means, I would appreciate any help, so please consider donating to my GoFundMe, or consider sharing this video. Thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you were having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. Love you, Carl. I have full faith Carl slam dunks this. Yeah, please support Carl. If, if anyone wants to see Billy Mitchell lose even more, help Carl win the case. My voice is still messed up, so it's going to sound like I'm going through puberty a few times throughout this video, and that's just the way it's going to be. I'm going to state something obvious now. Everyone finds different things fun. That's a core component to remember about life. I feel like in the age of Twitter, that's just been lost. Where if someone finds something shitty that you enjoy they take it as like a personal attack on their honor and they'll fight tooth and nail to prove that they're wrong for not liking what they like but the reason i mention that is even though everyone finds different things fun or different things enjoyable there is one unifying pleasure that everyone can agree on and that's watching billy mitchell catch l's now i know this isn't the most flattering image but it's so fitting for today's story Someone said it best, Billy Mitchell looks cell shaded and his hair looks like he's perpetually wearing a hoodie. Now, you know him potentially as the King of Kong or the self-proclaimed video game player of the century, but what he actually is is the biggest fucking clown of this century. He is Bozo Incarnate. He used to be known for video game high scores, but upon further inspection, it's been confirmed pretty much without a shadow of a doubt that he is just a cheater. They're not legitimate achievements that he's uh, obtained. It's all fraudulent. So Billy Mitchell was outed as a cheater, and instead of just fading away into the Shadow Realm gracefully, he instead started lashing out, and now he's become known for frivolous bullshit lawsuits against anyone who makes fun of him or even really talks somewhat negatively about him. That is his claim to fame now. Just nonsense lawsuits and making a fool of himself publicly he can't help himself he's addicted to humiliation it's pathetic and i have covered every single one of his losses pretty much because a friend of mine who's an incredible youtuber named carl jobst has been not only involved in lawsuits with billy mitchell but covering every fucking blunder he's ever made and how he continues to beclown himself in front of everybody I love Carl's content, and I especially love his Billy Mitchell content. Can't recommend it enough. And today, I want to talk about his most recent one. Like I said, everyone has different tastes, but I'm going to tell you, everyone can agree that the ultimate pleasure doesn't come from the first time you try ice cream or when you lose your virginity. 
the ultimate pleasure is laughing at Billy Mitchell losing. And he just lost again. In fact, I don't think he's ever won a single legal case or anything like that. He tries to bully people with it and it always blows up in his face. He always ends up with more shit on his face than two girls, one cup. So, I'm just going to break down the situation. I'll link Carl's video if you want the in-depth review of it, but I just want to give you the cliff notes here so we can just start pointing and laughing at this guy. He, of course, has like a million active lawsuits, but the one we're focusing on today was one that he had levied against a man named David Race. David Race used to actually be part of Billy Mitchell's team. He was very staunchly supporting Billy Mitchell when all of the cheating allegations came to light. He actually worked very hard to prove that Billy Mitchell was legitimate. He wasn't a cheater, and everyone accusing him of cheating was wrong. However, once he really... That was tragic, listening to that series of voice cracks there, but not much I can do about it right now. But once David really dug into the meat of it, like got into the weeds and investigated Billy Mitchell and all of the allegations, he came to the conclusion that everyone else had, that he was a cheater. So, David Race no longer supports Billy Mitchell or defends him from these allegations. In fact, he openly mocks Billy Mitchell and calls him a cheater now. Now, the lawsuit kind of boiled down to... Billy Mitchell was trying to silence David Race because David had an Excalibur tier weapon to use against Billy uh, and his credibility in the legal sense. Uh, what happened is, since David and Billy used to be so close, Billy had actually confided a nefarious, <laughs> evil anime character supervillain plot where he was going to fake a, a bunch of shit in order to make people look stupid. It, I, I can't even begin to explain how stupid his logic was with this whole plan, but Billy Mitchell had called David in order to declassify his top secret scheme here, which basically boiled down to just being extremely fucking petty and doing some shady shit in order to make people feel silly, make them look silly and goofy. Uh, it's a horrible, horrible plan. But why it's important is because it showed that Billy was more than willing to lie, uh, which is very bad for his credibility, obviously. So this being used as evidence would be pretty damning. The transcript is here. The audio is in Carl's video if you want to hear it in its entirety. I'm just going to show you the transcript. You can see that David's literally just one-wording him. He's just saying, yeah. He's just like actually holding space bar through this conversation to skip through the dialogue with Billy as he's divulging this galaxy brain plan. It's so fucking embarrassing from Billy. Now, after this conversation was recorded and Billy became aware of it, he issued a lawsuit against David because it's it's pretty it's pretty bad for Billy here. And he was suing him because he had been recorded without his consent. And Billy is in Florida where it's a two-party consent state, so you would have to have Billy's permission to record this phone call. However, David lives in Ohio, which is a one-party consent state, so David did not need permission to record that phone call. So Billy Mitchell's lawsuit had no legs at all. But it did take two years before it got thrown out, but it did get thrown out because Billy Mitchell, he knows nothing except how to lose. So... This did get thrown out. It took two years, and there was a lot of, like, less than stellar legal work done for David here because this should have been thrown out very quickly. Since David was the one that recorded it in a one-party consent state, he wasn't obligated to play by Florida's rules. It, it, that doesn't even make sense. It's not logical whatsoever, which Carl points out as well. So David slam-dunked this case. He did win, but it cost him a lot of money. And unfortunately... Billy Mitchell's not done. He is now escalating this case to the fucking Supreme Court of Florida, where I am confident he will lose once again, as he always has. He has actually been born in this world to be a loser to be laughed at. That is Billy Mitchell's legacy, but I wanted to cover this most recent lawsuit because it's just another fat fucking L for Billy Mitchell in such a silly way. So yeah... That's really about it. I look forward to seeing Billy Mitchell lose more lawsuits that he himself keeps filing. Yeah, that's about it. See ya.
Billy Mitchell has become one of the internet's favorite punching bags as most people continue to cheer for his continued downfall and root for his unending failure. He finds new ways of embarrassing himself. Billy Mitchell's a name you've probably heard a couple of times. He's the self-proclaimed video game player of the century because of his high score in Donkey Kong, featured prominently in the King of Kong documentary as well as in movies like Pixel or, most entertainingly, The Regular Show where he was so upset with his portrayal in the regular show that he tried to sue them, and he got absolutely catastrophically cum-dumpstered by the judge, who just did not take any of what he was saying seriously. And that's kind of Billy Mitchell's whole legacy now. He's no longer known for any of his achievements in gaming. He's known for these frivolous, pathetic lawsuits and temper tantrums he throws. Over the years, his achievements in gaming have been heavily scrutinized, and it is pretty much confirmed that he cheated on all of it. And over the years, he's made a habit out of suing anybody who even so much as mentions him in cheating in the same sentence. Meanwhile, for the last few years, I have directly called him a cheater, and I've received nothing. Billy, where is my present from Santa Claus? Where is your little fresh fucking pitiful lawsuit? I don't know why he refuses to engage in a legal battle with me, when he is so happy to do it with everybody else. Carl has been documenting all of Billy Mitchell's legal struggles that he brings upon himself. So, Billy Mitchell is engaged in lawsuits pretty much 24-7 and has been for years, but now he's in some very high-profile ones where he is getting his ass cheeks held to the fire, and it's not looking good. It is extremely entertaining to watch all of the updates Carl provides on the Billy Mitchell case, so I highly recommend checking these out. But what I want to talk about today is how desperate he seems to be, be how desperate he seems to be becoming because of probably the financial burden all of this is causing him. He has turned to making a cameo to try and get an influx of cash. <laughs> and man, does his cameo fucking stink. You see Billy Mitchell made a cameo? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's really getting desperate for a little uh, lawsuit compensation, it seems. So you can get Billy Mitchell to say something for a cool 60 bucks, I think it was, right? Oh no, 5 bucks. Book a personal video for $48, okay. So this is just like a text message that no shot he actually sends. Mitchell, video game player of the century. I've met many of you at conventions, both national and international. Give the gift of gaming. Never surrender. Never. What? How does... That's not a slogan, right? I don't remember him ever saying that. Give the gift of gaming, never surrender. Surrender what? They're not coming to take our games, brother. Who are we surrendering to? The Chads? Like, I don't understand. I don't even... What kind of war is he fighting? Must have to do with his court case. Oh, true. Never surrender in the face of overwhelming insurmount or insurmountable legal evidence against your case. Never give up. Keep pushing. I see. That makes sense. What the fuck could this video possibly be at 2 minutes and 30 seconds long? Is this the hard sell on why you should buy a cameo from Billy Mitchell? Billy Mitchell, video game player of the century. And I can't believe I'm here. Damn, he's energetic and I in have this to one. Explain the Jedi the problems we have with Neil. And I says, you want to know the last time something wasn't Neil's fault? He says, when? I go... What is this? I want to know the last time it wasn't his fault. Is this like a monologue he wrote for his thespian troupe? I don't understand what the fuck I'm looking at. Or listening to, rather. And looking at, actually. Is I'm assuming he's trying to portray this as like a video message someone booked from him? But who the fuck would have him just read out Star Wars fanfic? Why would you have Billy Mitchell do that when you could actually just go to a real Star Wars cast member on Cameo? Okay, we are here at the annual Arcade Olympics. This is Billy Mitchell, video game player of the century. I actually thought there was going to be a video that goes by without him saying Billy Mitchell, video game player of the century. I thought for one second he wasn't going to mention that. We're here. That's probably Brian the longest Burke. he's gone without mentioning Steve. it. Eight seconds. Helmet. They can even share the Cameo? Doesn't that ruin it? It's no longer personalized. Bill. Billy Mitchell. Video game player of the century. Sir, you remember that. That was 24 years ago on stage in Japan. That you got a special message. You're a talented video game speedrunner. Oh, speedrunner. In my day, 
for the respect they show you and the way they've reached out, I'll be watching. Believe me. Why are you taking so many fucking pauses? But I'm always watching. It's verbalizing comma splices, Billy, please. This is not dramatic, it's infuriating. That could have been a 35 second video. But he keeps, pa he keeps fucking pausing. Like a malfunctioning text-to-speech. He's got an American axe behind him. That's actually so hard, what the fuck? What is that for? What does that have to do with Donkey Kong? He has two axes behind him. Richard, Billy Mitchell, video game player of the century. Speaking to your good friend Joel, brought up a few questions. Can you put up a score? Is that the Can twin towers on his tie? Oh my god, wait, where are we? In the American HQ? What is happening here? Can you ever, for today, happy birthday, my friend, from Billy Mitchell at World Record Headquarters. Oh, we're in World Record he Headquarters, I see. That now, now it makes sense, okay, I see. Well, he's looked pretty good. $60, huh? I'm glad everyone seems to be so happy. Nothing but five stars. Every single one of them, five stars, huh? Interesting. Very interesting. If you give them anything under a five stars, you're faced with a lawsuit at your door the next day. Why does he keep claiming to be the ultimate gamer ever? Brother, that's not what he's claiming. Are you not listening? He's the video game player of the century. Not the ultimate gamer. That's a totally different title, which you could have easily gotten if he wanted to. But he was too busy fucking your mom and every other goddamn groupie that was on his meat after he got the Donkey Kong record. So now he settles for just being the video game player of the century. And thank heavens for that, because if he went for the Ultimate Gamer 2, there'd be no women left for the rest of us. So God bless that he held himself back. I'm surprised he stopped at the century. I, he gave himself the title. Yeah, he could have gone for video game player of the forever... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's definitely other ways he could have done that. The eternal Lord Emperor of Gaming, yeah. You're right. I don't know why he stopped at Century. Kind of lame, actually. Like he said, in 76 years, there's going to be a new video game player of the Century that'll be crowned, and it won't be him. Well, it actually might be him. He'll be huffing his own fucking fart fumes to keep himself alive for the next 300 years. What advice would you give to a 19-year-old dude who wants to find love, but not with dating apps? Uh, I don't really have good advice for that, man. Um, I think, first and foremost, you don't need to, like, live your whole life around that goal. You're still extremely young. You don't need to, like, rush it. You can just naturally find someone that you really connect with over time. You're 19. You don't need to fall in love right now and find your soulmate at 19. So I'd say just let things naturally play out organically. Just don't obsess over it. Let it play out, and when you're single and 36, you can accept you're a loser. <laughs> oh, that got way too personal. Hey, I'll, I'll, say, I'll tell you something really uplifting. Billy Mitchell? I think we can all agree that this man is legitimately the... Like, it, he is L incarnate. Like, and I don't mean L from Death Note. I mean, like, legitimately just like a fucking turbo loser. He's married. A man has laid pipe. If Billy Mitchell can do it, you have... No excuse. None. I think he's married. Hold on. <laughs> oh, or maybe no woman's worthy enough to lock him down like that. I'm really not sure. Yes, he is married. And he has three children, so... If he can do it, anyone can do it. I wonder if anyone did a roast from Billy Mitchell. God, now I'm too fucking invested in this Billy Mitchell rabbit hole. So this one was apparently a huge hit with the entire team and got them to get the motivation for a project to go live, I guess. Inspire me. Billy Mitchell, video game player of the century. We are here on the cusp of UHIT going live that makes the on-base team the absolute best. From one champion who can easily recognize other champions, <laughs> UHIT. Go live. All right. I see why that inspired the team so much. From one champion that can recognize other champions. He does have a keen eye for that. 
That team went right to their computers and fucking flames were coming off of the keyboard. They were going so crazy getting that project ready to go live. Now that Billy Mitchell senpai acknowledged them. Please buy a cameo from Billy Mitchell for a friend's birthday. Like, conceptually as a joke, it's a, a, a silly haha idea, but I'm not spending $48 for Billy Mitchell to say, Billy Mitchell here, video game player of the century. I hear a special boy's got a special day coming up. I too had a special day. It was 1998. Donkey Kong. In front of a sold out Wembley Stadium. I set a world record. What are you doing to celebrate your day? From one champion who can recognize other champions. I hope you have a blessed day. Like, I don't need 48 fucking dollars for that. Don't fall for the Billy charm. It's... It's hard not to sometimes, especially when he's giving you... <laughs> giving you the eyes like this. Yeah, I don't know how you say no to a face like that. But I'll, I'll try and stand strong. I'll do my best. Who would be your pick for the real video game player of the century and why? Like, if I had to pick an actual video game player of the century? Um... Right away my head goes to two people in particular. Simple and Faker. I legitimately think both of those gamers have done so much to extend, like, professional gaming outside of just their zones. I think it have to be them, but I also want to go back even further because there's another name that I think really helped revolutionize the perception of professional gaming, and many of you might have forgot him, unfortunately. His name's Walshy. Walshy released the Halo 2 montage long, long time ago. This is the original upload too, I think, for YouTube, but it was I think it predated that. Walshy was a professional Halo 2 player who was doing shit no one had ever seen before. And when MLG was still around, Walshy became somewhat of a household name amongst gamers. And I think he really helped elevate professional gaming, at least in the way people look at it. His accomplishments aren't nearly as impressive as, like, Faker or Simple. But he was, like, an early adopter. Like, a pioneer. What about the Ogre Twins? They did a lot for pro gaming, if not more than Walshy. I wouldn't say they did more than Walshy. I'd say they were more successful than Walshy. But I just really think Walshy kickstarted that whole drive to be a professional gamer. Walshy was there so early, posting montages, content, like really elevating the scene. I'd like to start by addressing all of the individuals on Twitter that have been spamming me today, demanding that I give Billy Mitchell an apology. This is my official response to all of you. Almost fell off the chair on the way down. Billy Mitchell does not deserve an apology because Billy Mitchell is not innocent. You are letting him manipulate and lie to you as he has done for his entire career. I don't think he's even able to accidentally tell the truth about anything. If a single truthful statement left the lips of Billy Mitchell, he'd probably be set on fire instantly, smited by the Lord. His whole core being, his soul, is entwined with his lies. And yet somehow, People are letting him get away with it again. For those that don't know, Silly Mitchell here has convinced not only his audience, but also the general Twitter audience that he was somehow victorious in his lawsuit against Twin Galaxies. If you don't know who Billy Mitchell is, he's the self-proclaimed video game player of the century for his high scores, which were fraudulent. He is a cheater. And over the last five or six years, his legacy has just been as a spittoon for the internet to spit in and laugh at and just genuinely been the punching bag to everyone's joke because he is so pathetic. He's become less known for his video game antics and more known for his frivolous lawsuits, which he just tosses out of his ass out the wazoo. He sued Cartoon Network because they made fun of him in an episode. He sued YouTubers because they've used a meme that insinuates he cheated. The guy super sucks. He is a turbo fucking loser. But whiny Billy Bitchell here is never satisfied and always has to keep sticking his hand in the cookie jar. So one of the organizations he recently sued was Twin Galaxies, which was the site that used to host his records until they scrubbed them when they learned that they were cheated. They weren't real. He sued them for defamation and they recently settled and Billy put out a statement as well as Twin Galaxies and Billy led everyone to believe that he may be in the clear. His records have been reinstated thus he's not a cheater. Everyone was wrong about this guy. Somehow so many outlets 
are running with this as well, from what I can tell, that his records have been reinstated, which is leading everyone to believe that he's not a cheater. He is. Here's a four-hour video with irrefutable evidence that Billy Mitchell is, without a shadow of a doubt, a cheater. It's extremely obvious and downright painful how no one even bothered to look into this for even an iota of a second here. Billy Mitchell did not win. He did not prove his innocence in any capacity whatsoever, and his records haven't been reinstated. Billy Mitchell's only W here was by not getting absolutely biblically embarrassed publicly at court and trial. He, this is the first time one of his lawsuits hasn't just been used as expensive toilet paper. It's the first time one of his lawsuits hasn't just been laughed out of existence. So I guess it's a slight W. It's the best possible scenario Billy Mitchell could have hoped for because he and his legal team knew they could never prove that he didn't cheat. Because he did. And they know that. And everybody knows that. But they reached this settlement through a couple of different reasons, which we'll get to in a moment. But the settlement doesn't reinstate his records. Carl Jobs just posted a video breaking it down a little bit deeper, so check that out if you want to get into the nitty gritty. His video title says Billy Mitchell lost his lawsuit, which isn't exactly correct. Nobody won. But since nobody won, Billy Mitchell kind of got the best outcome. He got the good ending for his dead to rights case. Like, it's a load of baloney, and the fact they settled means that Billy Mitchell got the best he could have hoped for. He didn't necessarily lose the lawsuit. Now let's address the reinstated records everyone keeps talking about. What Twin Galaxies agreed to do was make a historical archive for how the site used to be when Billy Mitchell's fraudulent records were still there. They basically just added a Wayback Machine that showed Billy Mitchell's old records on it. That's it. It's not on the main leaderboard. They're not officially endorsing those as real runs. Twin Galaxies, from what I can tell, still maintains that they are fraudulent and he is a cheater. But they agreed in this settlement to at least house them on Twin Galaxies under this archive. That's it. It's just a portal to peek at Billy Mitchell's bullshit through Twin Galaxies' historical archive. It's, it's just way back machine for it. It's not an official reinstatement of his runs or giving them the stamp of approval that they're legitimate. He will never, ever be able to prove he didn't cheat because he did, and he knows that. The number one defense against defamation is the truth, and the truth is Billy Mitchell is a cheater. And if this ever made it to trial, that would come out. So the settlement here is absolutely the best case scenario for him, which sucks. It is really sad that Twin Galaxies settled here. The unfortunate reality is things went wrong on Twin Galaxies' legal side, and things went really wrong on Billy Mitchell's legal side. But at the end of the day, they ended with this settlement because it couldn't continue with the way it was going and the expenses that it was incurring. As tragic as it is, that's the American way. Whoever has the most money will usually win when it comes to these legal matters. It was becoming too expensive and it reached this settlement, which is the best case for a big boy Billy. Even if you just look at his official statement, this is really grinding my gears, nowhere in here does it even suggest that he was cleared of the cheating allegations, because he's a goddamn cheater, and everyone knows it, but for some reason, because Billy Mitchell is saying, like, the records have been reinstated, they're like, oh, he must not be a cheater anymore. And even in the statement, it even makes it very clear that it's part of the official historical database, not the actual leaderboards, it's totally separate, it's not real, they're fake, but people still ran with it. I'm like, Charlie, when are you going to apologize to Billy Mitchell? You know he's innocent now, right? It's like, no, hop off the goof juice. He's not. Now, there's a mention here of Dr. Zyda, and if you go to Twin Galaxies' website, you'll find that name mentioned as well. A supposed super scientist who's willing to risk his entire career in the defense of Billy Mitchell by suggesting it's possible he didn't cheat for those records. And this man is a goober, a straight-up goober. Carl Jops goes more in-depth on his claims. I'm just going to give you some of the cliff notes. One of his unironic suggestions is that well, it's possible Billy Mitchell forgot to clean the tapes before recording, which caused some artifacting, which made it look suspicious. To try and explain away how his runs matched identical to MAME runs. Unmodified runs somehow just artifacted with a not clean tape and looked exactly like the MAME runs multiple times over the course of years. What a weird coinky dink that is, huh? Like, those are some of his suggestions. It is bafflingly stupid what this guy tries to claim. I highly encourage you to watch that Veritas video going over the entire Billy Mitchell thing. There is no room for just freak coincidences or maybe there was some kind of malfunction, which is something that Dr. Zyda suggests. There may have been a malfunction, 
What in tarnation? Why, I ought to give you a swirly in the bathroom for that. He doesn't give him any evidence to it. He just says, eh, could have been a malfunction. What malfunction would cause it to look exactly like MAME? Like, what? How? <laughs> it is unironically one of those last-ditch Hail Mary responses you give when you have no out and you know your goose is cooked. Like, Charles, whose cocaine is this in your car? Well, I have no idea. I don't know how that got there. Well, how, why is it in your car? I don't know. Something clearly went awry. It must be some kind of malfunction. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Like, this... This Dr. Zyda risks his entire reputation to try and defend Billy Mitchell with the worst mumbo-jumbo ever. Nothing substantiated, nothing even sensical. And Twin Galaxies just puts his name on this pile of garbage saying, you can take the heat for this, but we're going to go through with this settlement and just put up a historical archive of his old record. It's not real. They haven't been reinstated, they just provided an old snapshot from 2014 when those records were there. So you can go look at the old record, but it's not on the main leaderboard at all. His records have not been reinstated. Billy Mitchell has not proved that he didn't cheat. He never will, because he cheated. And that's the simple explanation of it. Billy Mitchell got this settlement because he had more money than the other side. So he was able to squeak this out, which is a very slight win for him, admittedly, which is upsetting, because he doesn't deserve it. Had this gone to trial, I have no doubt his clock would have been cleaned here. Anyone, when faced with the evidence of Billy Mitchell's career, and all of the mistakes he made in handling the case, by the way, would immediately rule against him. And he knew that. So he got super lucky with how all of this unfolded. So I just wanted to clear the record here that Billy Mitchell is not innocent. He has not owed an apology from anybody. That's about it. See ya. Yeah, I was actually called as a witness to appear in court in the Carl Jobs vs. Billy Mitchell legal case that's been ongoing for quite some time. It's no secret that I don't have much respect for silly Billy Mitchell. In fact, I have more respect for piss stains in a public gas station toilet than I do Mr. Billy Mitchell. I didn't know I was allowed to talk about this until I learned tonight on stream that all of the transcripts for the court are public and that there are lawyers on YouTube that are talking about the case as well as sites that are publishing things about it. And they have all of the details. There's a site called Perfect Pac-Man that laid out like the entire day I was there and got every single thing right on the money, including what I was wearing and my hairstyle. I guess I don't need to remain as tight-lipped about this as I thought I did. So, I'll talk about it a little bit, but I am still going to play it cautiously here because it is still ongoing and I don't want to jeopardize anything by saying too much, but I'll talk about what's public knowledge here about this whole thing. It's very wacky. Like, the case is super serious, but some of the things that happened while I was a witness in it are... So goofy. I'm sure some of you have already seen by now. My fart made it as evidence in this case. Billy Mitchell's team used my ass trumpet in, in their evidence. So, fuckle your seatbelts. It's a bit of a wild ride. They certainly pulled out some weird maneuvers. They were running some plays that I don't think John Madden could have ever drawn up. Like, they had some fascinating tricks up their sleeves that Baba Vanga wouldn't have even dared to predict. Some of it, I felt, was just entirely unrelated to anything, which we'll get to in a moment. Like, to a level where I half expected them to just start talking about goof juice. Like, Mr. White, is it true that you have your own gamer sups flavor? Goof juice. And is it also true, Mr. White, that goof juice is the best beverage that's ever been constructed? And, Mr. White, is it also true that you can purchase goof juice right now at gamersups.gg slash moist? Well, yes, to all the questions. Goof juice is available right now. Like, it just felt like a lot of the questions really didn't pertain to the case, such as my fart. I'm not exaggerating. My fart is literally a piece of evidence here. Okay, so how did people... I don't know how people have this, yeah. Apparently I am allowed to talk about it. I was called in as a witness for Carl Jobs versus Billy Mitchell. And I, I don't know how people already have this information. There's a video claiming your fart is evidence in the case. How, how... I don't... Is that all public? 
I don't want to like overstep or anything. Uh, I, I'm told I am allowed to mention that, and I guess it's public knowledge now. How? Who? Wh where do you even find that? Yeah. I I guess I guess a lot more of it is public than I thought. I'm si just just purely out of an abundance of caution. I'll still refrain from going into too much detail about it. But it's it is not clickbait actually. Where is that photo from? It's from a video I made talking about Billy Mitchell uh, in the intro. It was after one of Billy Mitchell's lawsuits, and there was like a couple of like brain dead Billy Mitchell fans that like tweeted at me at the time saying that I owe him an apology. Though I think some of them were just being sarcastic, but even still for the intro I just played around with it saying like some people wanted me to apologize, so here's my apology. So I got up and tooted into the mic and then continued to insult Billy Mitchell. Oh my god, I'm reading this article from Perfect Pac-Man right now? Wait, how did they see me? Was it, okay, here, I'm gonna pull- I'll pull this up real quick. I guess- I guess I can talk about it? Disheveled, long hair everywhere, plain white shirt. This was court recording and screenshotting was forbidden by court rules, so I couldn't show you any pictures, but dude dressed up sharp for the occasion. Nice suit jacket, washed hair back, and a sexy man bun, sitting in his usual chair. <laughs> How he had to have been there, right? Like he had to. Yeah, so I guess the transcripts really are out there. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. They asked me about King of Kong, and I had literally rewatched it the day before I went to trial. <laughs> they got they actually have everything. So I uh, when I was cross examined, they used my videos uh I, I, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know why they used my videos, I guess, to show I didn't like Billy Mitchell, but that was pretty clear with the way I talked about him. Like, I don't think you needed this, but basically what they did for Billy's team is they pulled up a few of my videos, so this one, he's a cheater, and asked me to confirm that it was produced by me <laughs> earlier this year, and uh, <laughs> they played, I think it was 32 seconds. And it was where I was like, okay, so there's, here, they actually have the quote. Uh, spamming me down on Twitter, demanding I give Billy Mitchell an apology. This is my official response to all of you. And it's where I stand on my chair and I fart into the mic. Going on to just continue to insult Billy Mitchell. <laughs> Actual fart evidence. Billy Mitchell's team used fucking flatulence. <laughs> but yeah. So they used a couple of snippets like that with me making fun of Billy Mitchell. Like, the things I was saying about Billy, I, I feel like you as the person defending him wouldn't really want him to hear, or other people to hear. I was pretty surprised. Oh, and this was... I guess it's all here. They have all of the evidence, too. So I think the, the main thing that Billy's team wanted to do with that video was showcase a grapevine effect. So what they did is they pulled 10 comments from the comment section of two of my videos covering it that they were going to use as an example of the grapevine effect, right? And the natural conclusion you draw from that is you have cherry-picked 10 comments, some of which have zero interaction. Almost all of them, really, have zero interaction. 10 comments out of over 10,000 that they submitted as evidence. The third has 1.7. Yeah, yeah, I said almost all of them. But, like, if you look at the ones they cherry-pick, almost all of them have zero. There's this one that does. But this is also the thing that they're talking about is here. So this having interaction isn't even in regards to what they wanted to prove for Grapevine. It's this having five. They have no idea how the internet works. They also tried to enter a reaction video uploaded by another channel's evidence. Yeah, it was very clear Billy Mitchell's team wasn't familiar with the internet. They pulled up uh, one of those hundreds of re-upload channels that'll take like stream moments and package it for their own channel for AdSense. And they're like, this is your video, right, Charles? And I was like, no, it's it's not. Y you can see it's not, that's, that's not my channel. But they kept insisting like, but your face is here, it must be yours. But it's not, That's it's not my video, it's it's just not. So it, was, it became pretty obvious pretty quickly they don't really understand the internet. I was there to talk about his reputation. Billy has had a horrible reputation for 
I personally believe Billy's reputation was ruined the day King of Kong came out. He looks like a narcissist. In that documentary, which, as noted here, I literally had rewatched right before my, my appearance here. In that documentary, he literally looks like one of the biggest narcissists you will ever see. And he looks like a bully. He looks like a bad guy. And his reputation has never changed. But anyway, another thing... I don't see it here. Another thing they did was... Uh, in one of the videos I made, I went through his cameo, just kind of clowning on it. And Billy's team was like, those are all five-star reviews, aren't they, Charles? And I was like, yeah, they, they appear to be five-star reviews. It is important to note that there is botting issues with these services. Like, I believe most of Billy's five-star reviews, I think a lot of them are probably shilled. That's my personal belief. I can't prove it or anything. But they're like, can't you see there was a lot of people very happy with Billy here? And I was like, Th those are five-star <laughs> reviews. Yeah. Which, does, like, that, that has nothing to do with anything. I think they were trying to, like, grasp at straws. Like, look, people like Billy. People do like Billy. But yeah, all of this played in court, by the way. I, I want you to make note of it. The fart, and then all of this. This, like, this whole... They just let my video rip for a while. <laughs> like, I, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Like, he's the video game player of the century, not the ultimate gamer. That's a totally different title, which he could have easily gotten if he wanted to, but he was too busy fucking your mom and every other goddamn groupie that was on his meat after he got the Donkey Kong record. So now he settles for just being the video game player of the century, and thank heavens for that, because if he went for the ultimate gamer too, there'd be no women left for the rest of us. So God bless that he held himself back. <laughs> Like, I don't know why they're playing that. What does that do? Like, this is evidence that they submitted. Overall, I really just don't understand what the strategy was with playing those clips. It's clear I don't have respect for Billy. You don't need to put the icing on that cake. The reason I don't have respect for Billy is for the reasons I've mentioned. He is a bully. He is a bad guy. He is a narcissist. He is a cheater. He is a person of poor character and has had a horrible reputation for many, many years, all because of his own behavior and his own actions. I won't go much more in depth, again, just playing it safe here, because I don't want to talk about anything that's not, like, explicitly talked about in the, the public space there. So I'll refrain from going much more in depth here, but I just had to at least mention this because now that it's all out there with my fart as evidence in this case, how could I not talk about it a little bit? That is fucking crazy. So anyway, I'm wishing Carl and his team the absolute best here. It's still ongoing as of the moment. Sending my absolute best wishes their way. And uh, yeah, that's really about it. See ya.